So you need to be able to draw something relatively well in perspective with shading and you can draw anything. Schmid's book, Schmid, S-C-H-M-I-D. Look him up, you won't be disappointed. Uh, in his book, he always he always talks about uh, the secret squint, you know, where you have three quarters of the way, close your eyes so you can see value and you can see stuff. So they called it the secret squint. Well, it's not very much of a secret because most of us do it, and if you're not doing it, you should squint. Um, so I call this the secret box because nobody knows about the box, but it's not really a secret. If you understand the box, everyone should know about the box. So it's not much of a secret, but if you didn't know, here it is. The box. You wanna learn how to draw? Now, I've always maintained that you do not have to draw well to be able to paint. Drawing and painting are two separate things. Uh, Rich, uh, Robert McGinnis, uh, the, the famous Canadian artist, always, uh, always was one to stress, are, are you, you know, 70% painting, 30% drawing? 70% drawing, 30% painting. He was he was a master of, he, he taught me the importance of a little bit of line in every painting. Uh, but, but line and drawing, they're two different things. You don't have to be able to draw well to be able to paint. But what you need to understand is the basics of drawing to get behind that. And the basics of drawing are the box. If you can draw a box in perspective with shading, you can draw anything in the world. So I say that with my small grain of salt that says, if you're looking at a photo and you understand the box, if you can't find the box in something, I probably wouldn't paint it. So again, you don't have to draw well to be able to paint, but you need to be able to at least get an icon or an image out of something for someone to recognize. So like I said, you don't have to, you don't have to be a draftsman to paint, but you need to be able to go like this. That's an apple. And then you go, oh, that's kind of crazy. Uh, I guess he's doing a video and he's like super handsome and he's such a studly young man. Uh, I guess, and being the famous artist, that's an apple. I'm like, okay. Um, here's the difference. That's a cherry, not an apple. And the difference between this drawing and this drawing where I do this that's all I've changed is a bump and a bump. That's all I've changed. That's the difference between what I'm talking about, about being able to be able to draw something well and, and, and having something not drawn well that isn't recognizable. You don't have to be good to draw. You just need to make it look like the object that it is. So the, the, the thing about perspective is that if you're going to learn to draw, you got to learn some perspective. And I'm sorry, we all got to learn a little bit of perspective. If you learn a little bit about perspective, you're going to be able to paint better. But here's the, here's, the, here's the trick with perspective. Everyone has a perspective book. We probably got three or four of them in our arsenal. We all have the, the, the arsenal of our art books. And what is a perspective book? Well, page one does this and goes, oh, here's a railroad track. Yeah, we get that. Page two is like, oh, here's a box. Here's a box in perspective. Here's a box in two point perspective and and so page one is this page two is this page three is this then page three is some kind of church with a turret and there's lines and this and vanishing point here vanishing point here and a horizon line and things going here and then there's steps coming off and it's like oh i just got confused okay you don't need to know that this is what you need to know it's called the rule of the cross it basically says that anything vertical comes forward over anything horizontal. So these lines right here look like they come forward and this line goes away. Horizontal lines move away from you, vertical lines come towards you. If you understand that, then you're gonna be okay. So this is born out of this that says, here's your horizon line in your landscape and you have lines that do this and they come off and they get wider here and skinnier there. And so they get skinnier at the back, so they do this. And this is where you get your landscape. This says the brush marks need to be this big, brush marks need to be this small, 
Brush marks here should do this. Brush marks here should do that. If you do that, you're going to gain perspective in your painting. Plain and simple, what it says is, I'm going to put a horizon line here, and I'm going to put a tree here, and when I draw my trees like this, the line that comes off here needs to do this, the next line does this, and the next line does that. If you don't have this doing that, this and this, so they all point towards this, you're not going to gain perspective in your painting. So where where does this come into play? It's this. Oh, here I have some water in my painting. Here's some land and this is a lake. And I go, oh, here I have some water and I put more water in and then I put some more water in and I'm changing the color of my water right here. This is how a lot of people paint. And let me tell you that if you do this, here's my water and I paint it and I change the angle of my waves, this comes forward, this lays flat. Uh, hello mate, let's go to Australia. Upside down we go then. If I turn this now upside down, I now have a horizon line here with land coming out, but this is now my sky. This guy says, here's the bottom of your cloud that's going to be here. And here's the bottom of this cloud. And here's the bottom of this cloud and the bottom of this cloud and this cloud and this cloud. What I'm saying is that when you paint your clouds, everybody does this. Here's my sky. Oh, I have a cloud and another cloud and then a cloud and then a bigger cloud and a bigger cloud. They do this. This is what I want you to now think is here's my cloud. Here's a cloud. Here's another cloud, and here's another cloud. So my sky is doing this, and my land is now doing this. Done. So where's the secret box? Where, where does the secret box come into play? Well, the secret box says, here's a box. So we draw a box. We have a horizon line. And so if that box faces us, wonderful. If we draw a box in one point perspective, it does that. These two lines meet the horizon line and go through there. And that's fine. If you draw a box in one point perspective and you have shading on one side, it looks like that. If you draw a box in two point perspective, then you have this going on and a horizon line and the same sides in there. So this is one point, this is two point. I don't care what you do. You figure out what you got going on in your painting and, and, and figure out where you need it. But what you need to do is have a box. You need perspective and you need shading. Why do you need shading? This is how the brain operates. The brain looks at something and it draws a line around that object and tries to get an icon out of it. It looks at this and goes, oh, here's half dark, half light. I see that and it says, well, it's round. What do we know that's round? And it says, well, there's a bump in it and a bump in it and a bump in it and a stem. It says, well, guess what? That's an apple. It identifies it from the box. If it can see a light side and a dark side, it shows it in perspective, it's going to identify it. So you need to be able to draw something relatively well in perspective with shading and you can draw anything. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of rocks and I don't know how to paint them and it's going to take me forever. I do love the photo, but how am I going to paint it? Well, my friends, let me tell you, the box is your best friend because we're going to do something called guilt by association. Meaning, if you paint three of anything, everything else will be included in there that it's all the same. So, what do you do with this rock right here? Look at it. Here's a rock. Look at that light side. Here's the dark side. Here's the light side. There's a rock in front of it that's doing this. Here's a dark side. Here's a light side. Two rocks and maybe there's a rock behind it that's doing this. And it's all dark. So I got three things and then what do I do? I do this. And I say I have three rocks and another rock and another rock. And I have another rock here. These are dark. And then maybe there's a rock back here that does this, like this. 
and another rock that's doing this with a light side. And in no time at all, I have a pile of rocks. Horizon line. If you put a box on the horizon line, it ends up looking like this. These two lines go to the horizon line. So it ends up looking like this shadow side and it's even. You come down so that you have a horizon line here. And if the box is below the horizon line, then it ends up doing this as a shady side. It, what it says is that this now all meets on the horizon line here. But as you come down from the horizon line, you see the top of the box. But here's an interesting thing. When you go up, you have a horizon line here. The box that is now up here comes down to here and it does this. So you end up seeing the bottom of the box. Where am I going with this? Well, if you paint mountains, this is what you're doing. You're looking up at a mountain. The only difference is that you have a peak that does this and comes down. This is in shadow. And you have another one that does this, like this. And this one's in shadow. And they all come down. And then you have a tree that comes in front of this, like this. And maybe there's a little other mountain, like this, that comes down. And all of these do this so you end up with this sort of weird look at the little hidden box in there that's the secret box but all of these mountains have a light side and a dark side but they're in the shape of a mountain let me go one step further and show you how you get there all right Whoosh. mountain here's how to find the hidden box as long as you have light, as long as you have dark, you can do this. If you have a flat, boring, really lame photo of mountains with no light on them, kiss it goodbye. You need light, you need dark. Here's the light, here's the dark. Tracing paper. You put tracing paper over and look what you're going to get. You're going to start to see here a box. You're going to see another box and then you're going to see a box and you're going to see another box and this is in shadow and this is in shadow and this is light this one's in shadow this one's in shadow here and you're going to see a little bit of light and you're going to see these lines come down and all of this is in shadow here and you got this big thing here and in no time that is what you're taking out of that. I know where my dark is. This is the light coming up and the light coming up here and the light all here and some dark and all of this comes down. That is what you need to be able to decipher a mountain. Ho ho, my friend. Let's get puffified. There are boxes and clouds. Here's a cloud photo right here. Where are we going to find the box? Well, if you look at this cloud here, there's not a distinctive box in it. But let me tell you, if you're going to paint it, let's make a box with it. So, overlay, and let's do this. Here's a box right here, and here's a box right here. This is going down like this. This is going down like this. This is going down. Look at the bottom of that. Look at the bottom of that. So, we put our little shadow in there. Remember, the bottom of clouds always have shadows because the light that's coming through can't penetrate all of that vapor barrier that's in there. We have a bit of shadow on this side, a bit of shadow on this side. I'm going to put this third one in just because I, I super like this third one. So I'm going to put him in as well. Oh, maybe it's a her. I don't know. I don't want to be gender specific with my clouds. But this has a side too. So here we have three boxes. I'll show you this. There's your three boxes in your sky. But now what do we do? Let's get rid of that. And now what do we do? You play hide the box and you do puff. what's called puffification. If you're not ready to puffify these. And guilt by association. We have a few more clouds coming off of there. This one rolls around and there's some shadows coming up off of there. And there, and there, and then guess what? There's a couple of clouds down here, and they have the same shadowing, and this one comes down, and pretty soon you got some land there, and you put these in there, 
and you put a hill here and you put a barn there and a barn there and this cloud comes out over here and this one comes out over here and in no time oh maybe I have a hill back here this is my silo and my barn and then we have my landscape that we said look at oh I just did a cloud painting I'm good to go I will paint that right now oh my lord this is full of information how do I decipher what I'm doing with this well here's a quick way to do it it's called the box I know let's put this over top and let's see that goes that way that goes that way this seems to go that way that goes that way that goes that way this goes this way this goes this way and they all seem to be landing somewhere around here on a horizon line I don't need to know that much about perspective I just need to know that at some point some sort of level line is all there and things below it need to go up to it and things above it need to go up to it so let's get simpler than that though let's find I know the buildings are there and, and that we can all you know we can all deal with the buildings and 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 whatever is in there that they're all doing this and this one's doing that like I get that but I want to simplify this because I probably wouldn't paint a lot of that as long as I got the general idea where those are going it would be good I'm worried about the boat how do we make the boat work well let's do this here's the boat and so what I'm gonna do is go look at this does this this does that here's this this does this and the side of this does that this is the side that's going back to there here's the window here's the window everything on this side is in shade everything on this side is in light and now I play hide the box so I'm gonna start putting things in here that play hide the box and I put this in and then I put this stick in and I put a couple of these in I put a little line for that and this is basically what I want to paint it's as simple as that but this right here is a box and this also is a box what if you have a photo and you can't find a box what if there are no boxes what if I can't identify the box well there's sometimes you can't identify a box and sometimes you can't if you can't identify the box I, I try and say probably don't paint it unless you're kind of gonna do some sort of abstract painting or do a more two-dimensional painting absolutely you can do that but in this case where we want to be three-dimensional then I'm looking for the box well I don't see a box here oh my friend there is the secret box let's start right now by looking going look it this is all in shadow this is this I don't see a box in there at all well look at this right here there's the secret box there is a box in there the hat is in a box let's start with that and go here is the box for the hat that does this and this side is the one that's in shadow so if I can start with that that leads me to a box that's gonna lead me to everything else so I put this first box in and then I realize all right let's play hide the box so right away I start doing this and this is what happens and this is all sort of in shadow here so I'm gonna put that in but I just follow that shape here's the light side this is in shadow I'm gonna start rounding that out a little bit and making that darker and I'm putting that in okay so this box that's here leads me to know that believe know that this face is also a box which does that and says that this side of the face is in shadow and now I know that this hat is light but I'm going to want to make some of this light so I'm gonna put the shadow there but I'm gonna make some of this light and again playing hide the box I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna round this out and I'm gonna make this go up to here this is in shadow so we're gonna give him a bandana now and he wears this is all light so we put the bandana around here and we make this side of the bandana light this is a middle rounder now and I'm gonna to start to fill it in he's got some bushy eyebrows and he's their Mexican he's got good bushy eyebrows that's light. we love you man he's got a mustache going on right here he's got some hair going on right here this is all in shadow over here and all of this side right here is light that's enough of a drawing for me to say oh yeah I'm gonna make this, this one. I want a little more cowboy hattie there we go look at that right 
that's enough for me to say, hey, I could paint this now. I've got enough of a drawing that I could paint this. And I just took a box out of that.